thank you for attending my session. And I also want to say thank you to PMI for granting me the opportunity to be part of this historic uh, Project Management Institute PMI conference with an exclusive focus on the African continent. Africa, the continent of my birth, Africa, a continent so dear to my heart. Africa, the continent that gave me a unique perspective on life. Africa, where I learned right from wrong. And by way of formal introduction, my name is Moses Adoko. My surname or my last name is African as it gets. I have data to back up that assertion. In fact, the name Adoko is found or given in the African countries of Cameroon, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, Togo, and Ghana. And these are just the countries within which I have evidence that the name Adoko exists. In short, I am an African who loves the continent and its people dearly. But for context, in case you are wondering, I was born in the Republic of Ghana. I received my elementary and high school education in Ghana in the city of Cape Coast. I did my bachelor's degree studies in Kenya in an American university, which afforded me the unique opportunity to do internships in East Africa. The pursuit of higher education in the sciences, technology, and engineering brought me to the United States as a young man. And as destiny will have it, I have worked for the premier space science and exploration agency in the world, known by its acronym, NASA, NASA, for over 20 years. Currently, I am serving, or I am, the NASA Deputy Chief Knowledge Officer and Deputy Director of the NASA Academy. In this capacity, I'm responsible for ensuring that NASA, with a workforce of more than 17,000 employees, operates as a learning organization in support of mission success for all our space science, space technologies, and space exploration missions and programs. But before I begin my talk, there's a full disclosure that I have to make. Uh, and that is, please note that I'm doing this presentation as a PMI volunteer speaker and not in my official capacity as a NASA employee. If you wouldn't mind, allow me to begin my talk, my presentation by asking a few questions for our reflection. For instance, how can we, as project practitioners and business leaders, enhance the development of the project economy across Africa? How can we leverage the opportunities that are inherent in the project economy to transform communities across Africa? How can we use sound project management practices to lift people out of poverty in Africa? How can we as practitioners launch Africa into the orbital plane of project implementation success across the board? How do we go about preparing the next generation of business leaders, project practitioners, and a constellation of entrepreneurs and I use constellation for a reason, a constellation of entrepreneurs across Africa, in respective of the geographical and political challenges that exist. Friends, I intend to use the next few minutes to share a few ideas of these questions, on these questions, and how we can explore the opportunities inherent in project economies. And I will also challenge you as leading practitioners to bring the African context into the project economy conversation. Because there is an African context in the success equation when we talk about project economy or the execution of projects across Africa. In fact, there are unique opportunities that only you as professionals operating in Africa will appreciate as value added or game changer for the profession. The PMI theme for this conference is Africa in the age of the project economy prepare for your future. Africa in the age of the project economy, prepare for your future. This theme requires fundamental understanding of Africa today from project implementation standpoint. The theme also tells me that one needs to have a clear understanding of the project economy and how it is playing out or not, not playing out in Africa today. The last part of the theme is the focus of my talk, and that is how to prepare for your future in order to realize the benefits of the project economy. And of course, considering my bio, my background, professional profile, 
you may be wondering as to what a guy with space science and exploration background has to offer on the project economy. The answer is simple and not technical at all. In fact, all human interactions, whether business, family, or self, is project management. We even learn to manage self, right? It's very difficult to manage self. But we even learn to manage self. I often joke that if you, as a person, cannot manage yourself, why should I trust you with my business unit or my project that is comprised of critical resources, critical assets, experts, human lives, people? Why should I? At NASA, in my line of work, we say everything is projectized. Why? Because we have learned that project management as a practice allows us to plan, design, coordinate, implement, monitor, control, multidisciplinary set of complicated technical activities and systems to achieve intended outcomes. All our missions, in respective of their complexities and technological challenges, are executed within the project management framework because the project management framework allows us to get a hold of very complex and often confusing set of requirements, designs, and activities. You see, the framework provides us methods, tools, and processes to manage complex systems development. In fact, in 2019, PMI recognized NASA's Apollo mission that put the first humans on the moon and the International Space Station currently orbiting Earth as among the 50 most impactful projects in the world. And I had the privilege and the rare honor to receive that award on behalf of NASA in Philadelphia in the United States. And so what is a project? Fundamentally, a project as we know it is any activity or effort designed to achieve a specific purpose or a set of objectives. A project has a beginning and an end. A project is often executed within a required time frame, and we call that schedule. And of course, you need resources or money to execute and achieve the intended or the expected outcomes. We call that budget or cost. And since it's difficult to predict life events with 100% certainty or probability, we think about and subsequently plan for events that may, that may negatively or positively impact our intended objectives or derail any of the key project performance parameters. And we call that risk management. And so applying the rigor of project management to every economic activity is good practice. Looking across the African marketplace, infrastructure development landscape, and economic activities in general, it is very easy to pick out various forms of the project economy in action and emotion. The PMI theme is insightful and relevant for the individual practitioner, for teams, for projects, for companies, and even for countries. To me, the phrase project economy means bringing a sense of project execution to every business undertaking, irrespective of the scale and scope. It is also about applying project management principles to every economic activity. It should also be noted that the PMI, that the future of work, is currently in an emerging state. But we already have an idea of the future of work because it's already in motion, it's already here. Simply put, the project economy is also about transforming everyday business operations through sound project management and agile principles. Practitioners, professionals, teams, projects, and even portfolios should be encouraged to adopt the project economy for improved productivity and business outcomes. The real question though, the real question for the African region is, how can we remodel or re-engineer the project economy to suit the uniqueness of African economic activities, systemic developmental challenges, and the social needs of the African people. How can we do that? We can start, we can start by reviewing practices for efficiency and results. For example, some of the entrenched project implementation practices that have failed to produce outcomes 
or outlive their time in place because of technological advances have to be abandoned and replaced with effective protocols. We need practices that produce outcomes and results. Practices that produce outcomes and results. But I need to state for the record that I have confidence in the current generation of African project practitioners and business leaders. My confidence is based on practical observations and a tangible drive across the continent for aggressive implementation of what works and leaving behind what has failed Africa for many years. In fact, there are many project practitioners, business leaders, managers, and leaders in Africa who are already, already demonstrating leadership in this course. And for that, I am grateful as a son of Africa. I know for a fact that many of you attending my session as leading practitioners and leaders are already doing what is required to advance the project economy in Africa. And for that, allow me to say thank you. But please, for those of you that have already made progress, I will appeal to you to scale it up, expand it, grow it, and remember to show others how to begin and how to make progress. In other words, expand your leadership influence by showing others the way and creating conducive environments for innovation and talent cultivation. In March 2020, the consulting firm called McKinsey and Company pointed out in a report that infrastructure investment in Africa has been growing for a continuous 15 years. But the report added something which got my attention. The report said, quote, the challenge, the challenge with these developments is that Africa has a poor track record in moving pro projects to financial close, end of quote. In fact, the McKenzie report pointed out that 80% of all infrastructure projects fail at the feasibility and business plan stages. The writers of the report call it Africa's infrastructure paradox. Africa's infrastructure paradox, meaning there is a need and availability of funding together with a large pipeline of potential projects that needs to be done, but not enough money is being spent. In fact, the report also cited low technical capabilities as well as limited financial resources being dedicated to developing feasibility studies underlying that and business plans which in the long run result in many of these projects being rejected or canceled. Really? I asked myself when I read the report, really? And so what can be done to change this project performance indicators? Certainly the project management profession has a lot to offer in this regard, and that is good news. Of course, I'm well informed of the complexities that contributes to such statistical indicators, as well as some of the root causes of the problem identified in the McKenzie report. But those are not the subject of my talk today. The question still remains, what can we do to change some of the poor project performance outcomes, such as the one captured in the McKenzie report? What can we do? I'm excited and very positive about the future because practices based on the project economy infused with realities of the African context will bring about change and improvement. We can also do a few things as practitioner community to improve things and project outcomes. One, we should demonstrate how agile and contextualized, very important, contextualized project management can help to change poor project outcomes, whether in infrastructure development, construction, mining, oil and gas, telecom, or banking. Two, we should educate, show, show business owners and operators across the board on cost-effective project risk management practices. Very important. Three, we should use today's available technologies as rocket fuel. This is important for someone in space science. We should use today's available technologies as rocket fuel for project management across disciplines in order to move quickly because Africa must move very quickly. Four, we should creatively use project management to permanently get people out of poverty. 
not to depend on the short duration economic relief packages that are often inadequate and time bound. Five, we should conceptualize and implement project management practices with people as its focus. And I'm calling for a people-centered project management framework in action, not in talk, not in presentations, in action. Profits are wonderful and an imperative for all businesses, but it is a win-win or a win for all when business practices are people-centered. I have nothing against charity efforts or donations to social causes by businesses and corporations, but we need a permanent solution for poverty and youth unemployment in Africa. And the project management discipline can be a vehicle, an effective vehicle for that transformation, or at least part of the solution. Africa's population as of 2019, based on United Nations estimates was around 1.3 billion, with a yearly increase of 2.52%. Almost 60% of this number were under the age of 25, making Africa the world's youngest continent in 2019. In fact, demographic projections from the United Nations tells us that the median age in Africa will be around 19.8 years in the year 2020. In other words, this year, 2020, the median age in Africa is close to 20 years, and I call this the 320s, 20, 20, 20. Think about that. Friends, this is another paradox for Africa. A paradox indeed, because Africa is also the oldest continent by a measure of geological estimates. Some researchers with the African Union even points out that by the year 2030, the youth of Africa will make up, will make up 42% of the entire world's youth population. These indicators are a battle call for all Africans, all Africans in different walks of life, to institute and implement aggressive mentoring programs. And I'm talking about both formal and informal mentoring. Sometimes informal mentoring is very effective. Friends, we risk passing on the baton of business leadership, project leadership, project implementation, business know-how to a generation that is less equipped and less prepared to lead Africa. As project leaders, I am pleading with you to informally adopt a young professional, one, the one with the spirit to learn and grow, and mentor them. Please show them the value of sound project implementation and its benefits for all, including its benefits for our farmers and traders. The youth statistics of Africa makes it a professional imperative for all project practitioners and leaders to execute both formal and informal mentoring and cultivation of talents for the project economy. Please note that whether you are a project manager, a director, a leader, or just find yourself in leadership, remember that your success is directly linked to how successful you are in building up someone or cultivating a talent to pick up from you when it is time for you to move up, step away, or retire. And such is life. We owe it to our chosen profession and our individual accomplishments to build a project management system that has continuity. You need talents that can maintain and improve upon your legacy. That is how you will be remembered. And by the way, the project implementation life cycle teaches all of us about the value of sustaining what we build. It may interest some of you to know that I have had many work assignments and engagements involving many African countries, including living in different regions of Africa, which afforded me the opportunity to experience the diversity of African talents and know-how. Not long ago, while schooling in Kenya, I seized the opportunity to understand the region, including its rich, rich cultural dynamics, the brilliant minds, and the innovative spirit of the people. I did internships in Uganda, which enabled me to experience the breath of Uganda from Fort Porter in Barala, Kasese on the foothills of Renzori Mountain, all through Chirika near Kampala. And here again, I noticed the resilience, strength, and positive disposition of the people of Eugene, Uganda. 
Tanzania, with its rich diversity, a blend of young entrepreneurs and creativity ready to launch solutions. And in West Africa, whether I was schooling in Cape Coast, Ghana, or walking the streets of Yaoundé Baf or Bafia in Cameroon, I learned that the African is energetic, resourceful, and solution-oriented. And all South Africa will always remind me that Africa can and will overcome its current challenges. Friends, as I walk through the specifics of the African professional character, I walk through the specifics of the African professional character because I want to confirm for you that these attributes can be cultivated into a powerful work workforce in support of the project economy across the continent. I don't have to convince you about this unique capability, but I can confirm it for you. On a personal note, if you wouldn't mind me sharing, I have learned over the years to infuse the energy of the West African personality with the reflective spirit of East Africa and the calm but confident disposition of Southern Africa to mold a unique approach to my professional life. Friends, there is strength in the African professional disposition and character for project management excellence. A note on reflection. A reflection on my professional journey often reminds me of the need to share the lessons that have guided me along the way to encourage others. But what have I learned during the course of my journey that can be good enough to share with a highly accomplished group of leaders, executives, project practitioners, and business owners operating in Africa? Friends, there are three key lessons that have helped me along the way and continue to serve me very well. And so if you wouldn't mind, let me share these lessons with you. Lesson number one, I've learned to be curious. I've learned to be curious based on a genuine desire to understand, simply that. I have also learned it is important to establish relationships in order to understand and build a community of understanding. Because it's impossible, it is impossible to do it alone. In fact, you need a community that understands the mission in order to succeed. And so encourage your project members, your teams, your staff to be curious, to ask questions and establish productive relationships with a common purpose. Lesson number two, I have learned to welcome differences and unpleasant news. I have learned to welcome, intentionally welcome differences and unpleasant news. You see systems by design, whether technical, institutional, or human systems are better optimized when multiple pathways or options are analyzed for inputs. In short, diversity of thought, diversity of skill sets and ideas are essential ingredients for optimal solutions. And so I have learned to respect diversity in its various forms. And most importantly, I have learned how to leverage diversity. And by the way, I have learned to welcome differences. Please welcome differences. I know that differences come in different forms. As a leader, welcome unpleasant and bad news from your team members. Do not create a culture whereby your team is afraid to bring you bad news or unpleasant news. When you operate in that manner, you will lose critical insight and cues for managing risks and prevent those risks from becoming big problems, setbacks on losses or losses. And lesson number three, I have learned to look forward to the future with a sense of anticipation. And on that note, I need to point out that the future is for those who can handle chaos, ambiguity, and uncertainty. As someone who has supported space science and exploration for over 20 years, I have learned that the future is for those with the mindset and the dexterity to handle chaos, ambiguity, and the unknown. You see, often what appears as chaos in the distant future are the same elements that with the passage of time and persistent and guided curiosity become the welcoming lights to new horizons, new stars, and new constellations. And so be encouraged. Be encouraged in your project management practice leverage diversity in all its forms and celebrate the future. Find innovation within your existing structures 
and project management practices. Mentor someone, the human spirit from our own Serengeti planes to our present civilization, space age, has always looked beyond challenges. And so be encouraged, be encouraged and you will succeed. I wish you all the best in your project management journey and thank you.